Gotta love our insulated system because it's December and that's in a t-shirt in here. And we've got that heater going, we've got that heater going, and it is, I don't know where our temperature's going. 64 right now. 64. But I just turned them on just a little bit ago. So yeah, today will, is actually a warm day. It will rise up to, I think, probably 70 in here, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt, and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. So today, all I'm doing is putting in these little upright guys. You can kind of see it tapers. This is an extra piece on there just to hold in place, but it actually tapers over this edge. Um, and then this is going to be a little bit different. So instead of doing the end piece, um, all one solid area, what Jess and I decided to do is we're going to have a drawer along the bottom, the whole length of this, um, that pulls out this direction and then kind of have a false front that's going to look like a drawer at the top area too. It's easier for me to frame that out of little pieces than it is using one big large section. So what we did is we moved in this bulkhead into what the depth of that uh, drawer is going to be. Um, and that's where this one's going to ride. Because the main bulkheads of the galley and settee are actually structural for the boat, we've switched from using our polyester resin to our vinyl ester resin, which is much stiffer and stronger. now and cutting openings in the settee where the uh, basically going to have access hatches from the top where we can get in and, and uh, get to things in there stored in this area. Um, you can kind of see how I've laid it out now, little black marks around here. Um, it's also going to give me the ability to glass then from the inside, it'll go in, in through those openings and glass in to make sure it goes against that bulkhead and gives us all that extra strength through here to help support that, that main bulkhead. We're going to use the track saw and a jigsaw to get them hopefully clean looking and then I'll have to go through and decor it, fill those in and put stops on basically to prevent it from dropping all the way through of course. Yes, I know, I know. What are you going to have to tell the king? That I can't make it this weekend. Okay. Oh! Hi there. I didn't see you there. My name is Elizabeth Earl. I'm here to tell you the story about Grow Out and how it saved two Americans. It was a bright December morning and Tucker and Jessica decided to take a little trip to the Chesapeake. And although 
Tucker is thinking, I could cut down this tree and make a fire. Jessica says, darling, don't be dramatic. Let me check the power on my Growot Infinity 1500 power station. After whipping out her handy little app and checking if it was at full charge, of which it was, she snapped her fingers and suddenly 2,000 watts appeared magically beside her. Jessica holstered up the 36 pound unit and turned to Tucker with a wry smile and said, don't worry, I've got this darling. Jessica continued to hook up the power station. Jessica turns to Tucker and said, you continue making the stew and I will make us a lovely cup of tea. And you know what, darlings, they had the ability to do both, mostly because the Grow Watch Infinity 1500 has in total 12 outlets that can be used at once. Oh no, I've forgotten your phone charger. Never fear, says Jessica, for the Grow Watch charges your phone up wirelessly. And once her phone was charged, they were able to do that. TikToks take their pictures to the Instagrammy thingy. So you see, darlings, it's there to power all of your needs. It's perfect for travellers and contractors and anyone who just needs a big backup boost. With that, please feel free to visit the link below where you can find your own powerful power with Grow Watch Infinity 1500 power station. So we're starting to get the backrest built for the settee. Now this is the issue that I think everyone that I've talked to that has built some type of kit runs into. Well, they've of course modified a few things, so they're not using the, all the pieces that came from the factory. We all seem to run into it when we run out of big sections. So I've been going through and trying to figure out a what I need left. Now the one thing is that came from Max Crews are perfectly flat, but they have a nice finish on them as well. I'm just hand laminating uh, like Nata Core, which is like the honeycomb stuff, so it gets a little bit rougher of a finish to it. So I'm trying to use these uh, pieces for cabinet fronts, a better material for it, easier to get a veneer on there and get a nice finish. What that's done now is made it so I am piecing sections together here what I do is just obviously just cut them, bond them together, and then I have to go through and just lay a light glass over the top of it. These panels, all they have is a 12 ounce glass on either side anyway. So one more layer of 12 ounce over the top of this, and it's fine. It blends in well when we go to ferret. And what we've done is, you can see it over on this side, we laid out a line of where the base needs to be. So that, you can see on this one, is giving us that. So that is exactly square from the front of the, the couch. The back piece though is gonna take a little while before we can actually install that. There's a big compression post, uh, aluminum compression post that goes in here and helps spread that load from the mass. Well, we are having that welded up and anybody that has tried to have metal work done lately, it is a long process. They are booked out solid. Every single welder is busy, but that's preventing me from blasting to this side because it goes right there and you need to be able to bolt that in. So right now I'm just building this area, building that, and then I'll concentrate on finishing the cosmetics of it. And then we'll go back and do this back section. This is the four inches we added to the counter space here. So that's a splice for that, um, from that piece. And then you can see we're starting to add the edges that go around. This is just rough in there. Um, we're gonna go through ferret round over the edges and glass each one of those sections in so it'll be a nicer finish. Our backsplash, you can see, I mean, how deep this counter is now. It is huge, massive deep counter, which we absolutely love for that. Um, I think it's gonna be very, very useful. Spices, knife rack, that kind of stuff will go over here. But you can see down below, I also have not been able to put in this panel yet because that goes and that's a structural item um and that goes all the way there at right where that compression post is going to go as well you can kind of get an idea what the back side of this looks like tool rail kick rail in now all right let's try this now Post six. Post six. Post six. All right, so that one's good
Uh. Close. Over the past few days, I have been working more toward bulkhead six that area and getting it fared. So if you look behind me here, I'm not used to filming on my phone. I can't find the battery charger for our GoPro, which kind of sucks. Uh, so now you see those green walls have been getting covered in white. Let's see, there's my thumb. Got to find a different way to do this. There we go. Okay. Haha, -ha, those rings on the back really work. Anyway, Matt is down there now because he just realized as I was trying to fare this that the section of deck here isn't bonded to bulkhead six. So once again, had to take some of that fairing compound off. He's gonna work on glassing that in and then I can go back once more. And if you've noticed those areas are now white because now that it's cooler, we can go back to using our Total Boat polyester fairing compound instead of the 3M, which slides on much smoother. I feel like it can cover surfaces better. So we're gonna end up having a mix of like orange and white all over the boat until we start getting that high build primer on. But because we want to spray it and we have such a big presser, we're gonna try and do as many areas at once, which is why it hasn't gone on yet. So we're just gonna keep sanding. And so today my job is going to be working on bulkhead five here. This area I've done a pre-sand before. And now that Matt has gone in and glassed that divot that I accidentally sanded in, I can take off this peel ply, sand that down, and then start getting fraying compound on this area. I'd be saying this in mid-December, but even after about 15 minutes of sanding, it is getting way too hot in this Tyvek suit. I can't wait to get it off. But luckily, because I had sanded this entire area a few days ago, as I dug into it and made that mistake, it really doesn't need any more work now. So I just need to um, clean it up with some styrene and then I can start getting the fairing compound on, which is the nice part of the day because after having sanded basically everything from like here to here over the past few days, my arms are so tired and fairing is going to be a nice break for me. I have noticed when I've been working with this total boat fairing combo before is that it's very specific how much of the MEKP catalyzer that you add to it. So for every ounce you're supposed to add about 10 to 15 drops based on like a 75 degree ambient temperature. I think I had been eyeballing my portions wrong before so now I'm using these silicone measuring cups. I usually do about two ounces at a time and fill it to this line. Don't catalyze it in here, but I just put it on my paper. And so hopefully that's going to be working better for me to make sure that I get the proper catalyzed amount in each time because in cooler temperatures like this, you definitely want to make sure that it still cures. Otherwise, it is a pain in the ass to try and sand off all that gummy stuff when it doesn't. I think I'll try this a new way. I'm going to show you the tricks that I know. Tired of talking And I need more of a show right now It's time that you made your mind up Cause lately all it ever does is change Feels like we're only talking, talking Going round and around, back around I will fight like
I have to admit that wearing the Tyvex when I do this is nice because all of those little like chunks that sometimes appear, I could just like grab it off my finger, wipe it on my sleeve. And even though these are totally work clothes for some reason, I hate the thought of just constantly wiping junk on them. So <sighs> trade off, I guess. Be warm, be clean. Get you out of your comfort zone. Cause I need more of the truth right now. It's time that you made your mind up. Talking, talking, going round and around like a round. I will fight like no other every day. Once Matt had used our thickened resin to bond the foam between our bulkhead and the deck, he continued on up in the bridge deck, beginning bonding our countertop to the backsplash on the outer portion of the galley. Because Matt's last project of the day was going to be glassing the seat of our settee to the front portion, and I had finished my fairing for the day, I measured out the spaces for him and then cut out sheets of our 12 ounce double bias fiberglass to later be wrapped around that edge. I just got my first layer of fairing compound onto bulkhead five in the galley area leading down to the board berth and it is crazy what a difference it makes in such an open space like that. So feels pretty good to have that on and Matt is just finishing up in here, getting the layer of fiberglass on the settee seats from where it goes on the horizontal to the vertical part. All in all, a pretty productive day and I'm actually kind of really looking forward to getting in here tomorrow and getting second coats on all of this and like making it really white because the more green that disappears around here, the better. Grow it, grow what? Make us some hot tea. <laughs> Lovely little grow what? Think, oh my god. Blimey! Oh dear. What, are, what is wrong with tea and scones? And crumpets!